Hey, hello, my friends. Paul Apollonia here. Hope everybody is doing well. Tonight, it is Sunday night <laughs> with these dates. I'm sorry. September 27th. I'm going to show you what I sold, a selected items of what I sold on eBay for last week from September 21st, 2022, September 27th. 2020. Hey, I uh, let me tell you what I sell. Well, well, real quick before I forget, please, if you like the video, please uh, smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm working on getting more and more subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you guys. 461 is not a lot, I know, but I'm uh, thankful for every one of you. And I'm trying to give you guys a lot of content. I did do a few videos this weekend I'm going to be putting up for you guys. Um, so basically, I'm going to show you select items I sold on eBay. Um, I do a lot of consignment. I also do a little bit of thrifting. I do a lot of uh, parting out of items. So um, that's basically what I do. I do eBay training. Uh, I love eBay. It works for me. It's a it's it's the best platform for me to sell on for what I'm selling. Um, I do mess around with Facebook Marketplace, and I do a little bit of Amazon, and I want to get into Macari and some other uh, selling platforms. But eBay is my um, platform of choice right now. Um, it's just, it's been good to me. So I'm, uh, I'm sticking with it. So let's get this show on the road. I, um, sell almost anything and everything. I'm going to tell you what, um, what went for consignment and what I made for consignment. I do a 50, 50, 50, 50 split with consignment items, uh, up to a hundred bucks. And then the percentages get less. I do 40, 60 and stuff like that. I'm probably going to be changing that up a little bit to include the fees on my end. I, I usually split the fees with the buyer, but uh, it'll just make it easier. So we like a 60, 40 split then I'll just eat the 2% or whatever. All right, let's uh, get the show on the road. And like I said, I've sold um, a ton of different things this week. Um, I also, I'm just about full time. I do a, a few little things on the side. I uh, do headlight restoration. I didn't do any headlight restorations last week. But I did uh, help somebody out, an older woman, uh, do some chores around her house, uh, hang up some lights and do other things like that. And that brought in some money. So that was good. All right. So this is a consignment item. I picked up a whole ton. This is actually, um, let me just stress, it's so important for us to create relationships with our competitors as long as they are okay with it and they're good. Um, I, I formed a relationship with a uh, guy, uh, I'll tell you his name, Trader Chris, in Pittsburgh, North Carolina, about 45 minutes away. Um, he's come to my eBay meetup group a couple of times that I run. That's a Thursday night, uh, second Thursday of the month at 7 p.m. <laughs> it's a Zoom meeting, so check that. There'll be a link down there for you. Um, and a guy called him up back in April. And uh, want to know if he wanted to handle some consignment items. He does not do the consignment I do. He does very, very high-end consignment, like stuff that I just don't have the um, I don't have the expertise in. To be honest with you, he does high-end, high-end jewelry and silver and all this other stuff, and I, I just don't have the expertise in that. So he sent them to me, and I talked to the guy. And he was great. And I said, look, this is a deal. This is something new I'm doing with this assignment, too. I said, I take what you want me to take, and I sort it out at home. And what sells, sells, and what doesn't, I donate um, and or, uh, you know, give to, like, other organizations of their choosing as long as they are local. So the guy was fine with that. And he has a whole garage full of uh, water pick stuff and some Stanley stuff. He was a water pick salesman and worked for Stanley and a few other companies. And he has half of a basement full. I took a van full of stuff and we're working on it. And I'm selling this stuff. Not for much. Like I said, 50, 50, yeah, 50, 50 split. So like about five bucks for this, but it's a real quick, um, ship real quick. Um, Ship out goes out first class. I wrap it up in some uh, bubble wrap and put it in a poly envelope, and it goes out first class. Uh, like I said, I again, I, I don't make a whole lot of money on this one, but it's fine. To me, I'm okay making that. Uh, it took me five minutes to list it, uh, five minutes to ship it. So um, I, I was thrilled with that, and I've got a whole ton of these filters. I'm not going to go over what I do for a listing this time. You guys know all that. It's, it's 
if you need to look at how I just create my listings, just go back to another video, another weekly video I did. It's all in there. I'm going to create a real quick video one of these days of just what I do for a listing and all my tips and tricks on that. I just think it takes up a lot of time for you guys. So let's go to the next item. Oops. <laughs> I hit the wrong key. I'm sorry. Another blower housing. This is a lawnmower blower housing. Uh, this is the thing that you pull to start your lawnmower, your pressure washer, your whatever piece of equipment you're using. Uh, these sell pretty well. Uh, actually, two years ago, I listed them. I didn't sell any of them. I must have sold 35 of these since uh, April. I'm averaging about 12 to $14 on these profit in my pocket after fees and shipping. Um, I'm doing free shipping on these because uh, that's what uh, most of the uh, solds were free shipping. So um, that's what I'm doing. I'm not a big fan of free shipping. Just make sure when you're doing free shipping, you're adding the cost into your cost up here, your price for shipping. Oh, let me show you one more thing. Let me go back to where we were. When I'm doing consignment, I rarely ever do free shipping. It just messes up the matrix. So I, I usually charge for shipping. Um, it, I did pretty well. I, uh, this one went out for uh, first class five forty five. So I made a few, a little buck, couple of bucks on shipping, and I do not refund on on overages on shipping. Um, I do flat rate shipping most of the time. Most of the time, I make a little bit of money. Sometimes I lose a bit of money. So it's a give and take thing. The buyer knows what the shipping cost is when they're buying it. Back to the blower housing. So this is the thing you you pull to get your mower started, your pressure washer started. Pretty simple to take off three or four bolts and they're off. Make sure it's functioning. Another key thing you need to do when you're selling these is make sure you take pictures of the sides. Sides are very, very important because if these fit all different types of mowers. Let me shrink this down. My ugly mug is big enough. Uh, these fit all types of mowers and pressure washers. So make sure that you're taking pictures of the sides and your buyer knows to look at the pictures of the sides. It's in my description down here. Make sure they match the one you replace. Uh, they're pulled from mowers and pressure washers, etc. So message me. I haven't had any knock on wood. This is like the last. I think I got one more to sell after this. Knock on wood. I've had any problems with anybody wanting to return these things. Another water pick thing. This was a good sale. Well, to me, it was uh, made fifth, like 15 bucks on this 50 50 split. This is the other consignment item. This, this stuff is selling. I've got a ton more stuff to list just from the stuff I got from him. This is sealed in the box. The guy already got it. He's thrilled with it. Uh, it went in a um, regional A box, I think, which was, I think this one went to New York. Uh, so it went to regional A box. I think it was 735 or 785 or 795 I, I can't remember how much it was obviously but um so i made 15 bucks on that again five minute list five minute pack and ship and it's out of here uh another uh water filter i think this guy bought no he only bought one of them somebody bought two of these things maybe it was last week um so i'm, I'm selling these like i said again because simon's nice i like it it works for me why I like it so much is because I'm not going out spending time thrifting and garage selling, but I am spending time meeting with people, getting to feel them out. Because you better. the one thing <laughs> that's one thing that scares people about consignment, you got to make sure you get good clients, got to make sure you get people that understand. Uncle Joe's mouse that he used for 10 years is still just a regular mouse, it's nothing fancy. The next person doesn't care. Uncle Joe used it for 10 years. So everything sells at market value. I try my best to get the most I can for the items, but everything sells at market value. Most people are okay with that. Some people are not. You need to really feel people out. And the minute I have any issue with somebody and I try my best, I cut them off. I, I, I just send, I take, excuse me, I take the stuff back to their place and the relationship is over because I can't, I don't have time to deal with people that have attachment issues to things. I always tell people when I'm doing consignment, make sure you have zero attachment to stuff that you are consigning. Another, oh, that's the same one. I'm sorry. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is another one I sold the same week. Same thing, $15. 
Oh, this is a gem that I I just sold this. Another, this is the same guy gave me this sealed in the box. It is an older humidifier. It is sealed. I did not open it. I'm hoping to gosh it works. <laughs> it went uh, somewhere out west. The guy paid a fortune for shipping. Um, like a lot. I had calculated FedEx ground shipping on this because it was so big. And I think he paid 60, 70 bucks for shipping. Why I did calculate it was because someone messaged me in, in North Carolina about three hours away and asked me about shipping if I could lower the price on my flat rate shipping. And I was like, oh, nah, I'm not a big fan of doing that. But I did check how much it cost to send it out to them. And it was just about the same price. So I changed it to calculated FedEx shipping. And uh, I just left it there. I, I took the weight, took the measurements. I added a, an, an inch or two to each side to account for the box. And I added a couple pounds to the um, to the weight. Now, how I do this is a lot of people would just slap a sticker on something like this and send it in the mail. I don't like doing that because some people are real crazy about their boxes. They don't want their boxes all marked up with shipping stuff. And I like to protect the item even more. So I went to uh, Lowe's Home Improvement and got a very large heavy-duty box. I think the box alone cost me like three something just for the box. Probably could have done it with a medium box, but two something. I come home, I take the box, cut it and cut it open, flip it over. So the writing's on the inside and I just wrap it, wrap it, tape it, tape it, and then fold it up like a Christmas gift, like you're wrapping a Christmas gift and uh, tape the living heck out of it. I almost used a half a roll of tape on that, but it's worth it. And it, it, it's on its way. I'm, I'm tracking it. So I'm excited about that. So I made 50 bucks on that uh, consignment deal. I don't know why all these emails are popping up. I'm sorry if you see those. Um, cigar boxes. I'm a cigar smoker, not a crazy cigar smoker, but I do smoke a cigar now and then. I'm smoking a little bit more now with the virus, and I'm stuck at home a lot of times. Um, I get these from the cigar store, wine store. They are free where I'm at. Some places charge for them. I would not pay any more than a dollar a piece for a cigar box because you're not making a lot of money on these things, but they do flip pretty quick. And I've got a ton more. I got a list. I don't know why I haven't listed them. Being an open book here, I make about six to seven dollars on these after shipping and fees. I wrap them in bubble wrap and I put them in a poly envelope and most of them go first class. They're under a pound. Remember when you're using eBay shipping? Post office first class goes up to 16 ounces or 15 ounces, one pound, whatever. If you take that same box to the post office, the post office's first class is only going to go to 13 ounces. So again, I don't make a whole lot of money on this. I am totally fine with making five, six bucks. It's a five minute list. I'm doing a sell similar to because I'm, I usually have these sold and, and I just do a sell similar. find the sold that I sold. And I had five minutes ship, so it's like 10 minutes, and I will take it all day long. I know some people are not into that, but I don't mind making that little bit on something. VHS tapes. VHS tapes too, do still sell, especially motivational ones. You ain't going to make a lot of money on these. This is sort of a consignment item, kind of. A lot of people just give me things a lot of times. They go, here, just take this. Most of the time, they're okay with that. Sometimes they come back and go, how did my stuff sell? Go, what do you mean your stuff? So <laughs> it's a good friend of mine gave me the stuff. He was closing down his place of business, and he found a big box of motivational stuff in the corner, and he said, just take this box. So I'm assuming it's mine to sell. Whatever, I'll give him the 10 bucks or 11 bucks when I see him next time. Um Again, VHS tapes do sell, believe it or not, motivational stuff, stuff that never made it to DVD. A lot of children's stuff sells, your Barneys, your Veggie Tales, um, Bob the Builder, um, a lot of uh, train, you know, tourist train things, you know, trains going through mountains and stuff, they sell. Um, you're not going to make a lot of money on VHS tapes. You'll probably get them, a box of them for almost nothing anywhere you go right now. But uh, so I sold this $21, $21.99 free shipping, went out media mail. I think the media mail was $250, $275 or something. So I did okay with this, even with, um, so I did free shipping because it's probably not a consignment item. Um, so I did okay with that. That's fine. Found the perfect box for it too. 
Uh, a plate, obviously, a plate, a plate. Not a big dollar plate. These plates have tanked all. <laughs> I just had somebody contact me, an organizer. I'm going to meet with her Wednesday, and we're going to look at somebody's house. Um, she sent me some pictures of plates, some fancy plates, one of a kind, whatever they were, Lennox. I don't even know what they were. Um, it's just all signature owl plates and and I'm looking them up and I'm going, uh, we're lucky to get 20 bucks for the set of them. We're lucky to get a couple bucks for each one here. And the plates have just tanked. People don't really collect this stuff anymore, but they do sell, but you're not going to make a lot of money off of them. So again, this, I don't even know where I got this from. Might have gotten it for free or something. I, I've got so much inventory. I don't even know where I got this from. So this up here with shipping, uh, it went out first class. I wrapped the heck out of it with uh, bubble wrap. And then I found a box, just like a piece of cardboard I wrapped around it. And I put it in a poly envelope and taped it before I put it in a poly envelope. So it's safe. Um, I've had pretty good luck shipping plates. I did ship one improperly once, I'll be honest with you. And it broke. And the problem with that is it was my fault. And I felt like an idiot because a lot of these are one of a kind. You can't find this stuff anymore, even though it's a low-end item. It's one of a kind. A couple more items left. Another consignment item for a good friend of mine is possibly moving. He's not sure, but he's cleaning the heck out of his house, and he's giving me a ton of stuff to sell. So uh, this is an old um, electric fence, whatever you call it, charger, fencer, charger thing. Keep the pigs and the cows and the pen, I guess. Um I looked it up on Google, I Googled it, and then I found one on eBay, and I priced it at what I thought was a fair price. I looked at Terrapeak, which is within eBay. If you have an eBay store, you get access to Terrapeak, which is a research tool. You can use Worth Points, a good tool, too. Uh, Terrapeak is free if you're a, a eBay store owner. I think Worth Point is $24.99. It's a great program. I love Worth Point. I love the people at Worth Point. Um, so I sold, selling two of these, and whenever I'm selling multiples of something, my first line and the condition description is, is what I use when I'm selling something used. First line is I'm selling multiples of these, so the item you get may not look like the one in the photos. Different wear and et cetera will function the same. So what I normally do is when I sell the first one, I sell the one in the photo, and then I sell whatever else. I, and I do have another one he gave me. So to... 44 bucks. I think I had to eat a little bit on the shipping on this one, to be honest with you. So what I make, 22 bucks. I, I think shipping was 18 bucks. It was going out to Vegas, I think, or Nevada. So, um, but it was a good sale. I'll take it. Not, you know, like I said, look, not, not a gangbuster week on eBay this, this week, but hey, I have good weeks and bad weeks and it's fine. I just chill out when I get a bad week. I don't try and stress out over it anymore. A uh, Nissan speedometer that I, I look on Craigslist a lot for the free things is where I get a lot of my stuff too. Uh, I get a lot of dishwashers I part out. And I just look for free stuff. And I got a whole bunch of car parts. Gosh, forever ago, two years ago, three years ago, maybe four years ago that I forgot about that was in my garage. <laughs> um, I listed this. The guy said everything worked that he gave me. So I'm judging, I'm basing it on what he told me. Um, if it if it does not work for some reason, I just give somebody a refund. Something like this, I'm not going to want back because he's going to have to pay. I'm going to have to pay for shipping. I would just say to him, just destroy it, um, and 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 that's fine. So I did really good on this. Obviously, it's my item, so I made four. I, I made. Uh, I think shipping was shipping. Oh, this uh, this was the first thing I sent. eBay has formed a new relationship with UPS. So you've got post office. They're trying to do away with the post office or do less with the post office with all the major delays they're having in shipping, which is killing me. Um, so you got post office, FedEx, and now UPS. So I looked at the um, the shipping fees, and it actually was $9, 9 something. Or no, it was, it was 7 something UPS. Everybody else was $9, uh, $15 post office, stuff like that. Um, so, I, so I tried UPS uh, this time. I haven't used UPS in a long time. Uh, my father-in-law was a tile a bath and a kitchen guy way back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Was up at his house a couple about a month ago, and he has a bunch of stuff he pulled out of your house. He goes, what am I going to do with these? I go, well, I'll, I'll take them. 
you know, or I'll buy them for it from you. I'll give you whatever, four bucks a piece or something. Or he said, no, no, just take them. And I've been doing pretty good with these. Funny, every time I sell a set, the buyer always messes me back going, do you have any tiles? Do you have any end caps? Do you have any crowns, tiles, same color? No, I don't. Um, so these are going pretty well. Free shipping. I'm making about $16 on these between, let's say, $13 and $16 on this. These fit right into an A box through the post office. If it's like close by on East Coast, A boxes are probably the cheapest. I could try and put them into my mess here. Sorry. Padded flat rate envelope, but I'd be a little leery doing that. Um, I had a bad experience with FedEx with a soap dish. One of the same color, but a soap dish that broke. And I've got a claim in FedEx for that. Uh, I don't know what happened there. I've shipped a lot of things FedEx. They're really, really good with their claims. This one gets broken. I don't know how this thing got broke. I bubble wrapped it. I wrapped it in uh, white packing stuff I get from the furniture store dumpster. I don't know how this thing broke, but it broke. And the problem was, again, just like the plates, they're one of a kind. There's not too many of this stuff out anymore. So I was really annoyed. The woman was upset, but not really angry at me. She's upset that it broke. But uh, I refunded her immediately when she sent me the um, the picture of it broken. I did ask her to send me pictures of the outside of the box and the inside of the box, and she was nice enough to do that. But I immediately send a um, refund, and then I deal with the, with the insurance on FedEx or the post office. Three more items left. Oh, look, another set of dish towel, a dish towel, another set of bathroom towel racks, uh, ceramic. These are one. Uh, I sold these actually today. They're in my car. Another thing I try and do is if I'm home, if I sell it, I almost immediately stop what I'm doing and go find it and pack it and get it ready for shipping and throw it in my car for the next day. Sometimes I even drive it down to the post office that day. If I'm not doing anything, post office is only a mile away or so from my house, so that's fine. So same thing, you know, these are white. These are going uh, international using eBay as a global shipping program, which is nice. All I do is ship it down to Kentucky. I think it's going up to Canada. And uh, eBay takes it from there. Once they get it, they send you an email saying, we got your item, and you are free and clear. If it gets lost, stolen, or broken, eBay picks up the tab, refunds me, and refunds the buyer, which is really cool. Another water pick uh, end faucet uh, filter. This is going international. I don't know where this one's going either, to be honest with you. I forgot to look on the invoice. Uh when I created the label, the shipping label. But uh, so again, that's a consignment item. It went in an A box, which was seven ninety six. I just remember the price of the A box. Didn't make anything on shipping, which is fine. I did make half of that. So what I make 10 bucks on this, which is fine. Again, five minute list, two minute uh, throw in an A box, a little bubble wrap around it, and it's gone. The last item, another filter. Just sold this one today. Again, not a big dollar item. Uh, $4.99 I probably made on this. Uh, shipping uh, went first class at five oh five oh five five fifteen. I forget. So I made a buck or two on the shipping. Well, my friends, that is it for this week or last week, should I say? I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you like. Please like the video; it means a lot to me. And I've got a couple other videos um, about me dealing with. Uh, taking hard drives out of some laptops and I'm consigning for the guy that had the electric fencer thing. Um, so, all right, my friends. So check out everything. Uh, check out all the links down below. I've got my eBay course still available for $1. That will be ending very, 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 very soon. Um, it's a $97 value. I'm having a $1 to help you guys out with the uh, pandemic we're in right now and people are stuck at home. And there's lots of things to sell around your house. And the course is good. It's a three or four year old course, so it's not brand new. But we try, and Martin Brossman and myself, we try and keep it evergreen, which means there's a lot of tips and tricks you can still use today. Actually, most of it is still valid today. But um, it's a good course. It takes you from we have an item and we show you, I take pictures, list it, ship it, et cetera. We go step by step. It's about a two hour course broken up into 20, 15, 20 minute videos. Um, don't forget about the eBay meetup group, uh, second Thursday of the month. It is a $5 charge as a Zoom meeting, and I'm trying to get a guest for that for October, and we will see. Um, hey, just to be safe, 
Happy eBaying. If you have any questions, leave me a message. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't get in a mask battle here, but wear a mask. Don't wear a mask, whatever. Just be careful. Just, just distance yourself from everybody. I want this over. I want this new normal to start, whatever that is. <laughs> so, all right, my friends. Hey, you guys have a great night and have a great week next week. I will be doing this again next Sunday or Monday. Have a good one. I'll see you now. Bye-bye.